In this lecture, we find the Fourier trigonometric series for the heavy side function on the interval from minus 1 to 1. The graph of the heavy side function is given below. The value of the function when t is greater than 0 is 1, while when t is less than 0, the value is 0. From the graph, one can see why the heavy side function is also called the unit step function. There are variations as to how the heaviside function is defined at t equals 0. But for our purpose, how we define the heaviside function at t equals 0 will not matter, as long as the heaviside function is piecewise continuous and bounded on the interval. For the sake of definition, we'll define the heaviside function, which we call capital H, to be equal to 1 at t equals 0. The Fourier series of capital H starts off with the constant term a sub 0. This is followed by the summation of the trigonometric terms. More specifically, we have a sub n times cosine n pi t over L. We'll explain what capital L means in a moment. And then we have b sub n times sine n pi t over L. So what about capital L? We take a look at the interval over which we are supposed to find the Fourier series for h. This interval is symmetric about t equals 0, so that the left endpoint minus 1 is minus l, and 1 is equal to l. With capital L equal to 1, the Fourier series then becomes a sub 0, plus the sum of a sub n cosine n pi t, plus b sub n sine n pi t. a sub 0 is equal to 1 over 2 times capital L times the integral from minus L to capital L of h of t. Capital L is equal to 1 so that this is equal to 1 half times the integral from minus 1 to 1 of h of t. For h of t, we refer to the formula. h of t is non-zero only when t is greater than or equal to zero, so that the integral becomes half the integral from zero to one. And there, h is equal to one. The antiderivative is half times t, and we evaluate this from zero to one, giving us one half for a sub zero. For a sub n, when n is greater than or equal to 1, the formula is given by 1 over L times the integral from minus L to L of h of t times cosine n pi t over L. Capital L is equal to 1 so that we can ignore 1 over L. h of t we know to be non-zero and equal to 1 when t is greater than or equal to 0 so that the integral becomes the integral from 0 to 1 of cosine n pi t. The antiderivative is 1 over n pi times sine n pi t, and this we evaluate from 0 to 1. At t equals 1, we get sine n pi, which is 0, and we get the same when t is replaced by 0, because we get sine 0. And so a sub n is equal to 0 for n greater than or equal to 1. We have a similar formula for b sub n. b sub n is equal to 1 over l times the integral from minus l to l of h of t times sine n pi t over capital L. Replacing capital L by 1 and using the definition of the heaviside function, we get an integral similar to the integral that we got for a sub n. 
b sub n is equal to the integral from 0 to 1 of sine n pi t. The antiderivative is minus 1 over n pi times cosine n pi t. And this we evaluate from 0 to 1. To evaluate this, we break this down into two cases. First, the case when n is odd. At t equals 1, cosine n pi t is cosine n pi, and when n is odd, cosine n pi is the same as cosine pi, which is minus 1. And so we get 1 over n pi for this endpoint. At t equals 0, we get cosine 0, which is equal to 1, and so we get minus 1 over n pi, which we are subtracting and so we get plus 1 over n pi. So b sub n is equal to 2 over n pi when n is odd. For the other case, when n is even, at t equals 1, cosine n pi t is cosine n pi, which is equal to 1. And so we get minus 1 over n pi for this endpoint. At t equals 0, cosine n pi t is cosine 0, which is equal to 1. And so we get exactly the same value, minus 1 over n pi, but we are subtracting this. And so we get plus 1 over n pi. And we get 0 when n is even. It is time to write down the Fourier series for h of t. The Fourier series starts out with a sub 0, which is 1 half. There are no other cosine terms because all the other a sub n's are equal to 0. The rest of the series is made up of the sine terms whose coefficients are the b sub n's and the b sub n's are non-zero only if n is odd. So the next term should be 2 over pi times sine pi t for n equals 1. This is followed by 2 over 3 pi times sine 3 pi t for n equals 3, and so on. Let's write this series using a summation notation. We will include only the sine terms inside the summation notation, and so we separate one half from everything else. Taking into account that we have only the odd values of n for the sine terms, we change the variable for the summation. First, we factor out 2 over pi from the coefficients out of the summation. Next, since n has to be odd for the sine term to be non-zero, we write n as 2k minus 1, so that k will be the index of the summation. So what goes inside the summation is sine n pi t, n is replaced by 2k minus 1, all over n, or 2k minus 1. 